I'll continue with the basic introduction of the course and the subtopics which I intend to cover in today's lecture. So, the subtopics which I intend to cover in today's lecture are uh, recent trends in environmental geomechanics or for that matter the geomechanics itself followed by some scenarios of waste disposal. And then I try to correlate how these recent trends and waste disposal scenarios are going to be of some use to us in developing this course further. A bit on soil improvement techniques and the philosophy, contaminant transport mechanisms, a bit of introduction and how this subject may lead to uh, the discussion on unsaturated soils, this is what I will try to uh, bring out in today's lecture. So, recent trends, waste disposal scenario, soil improvement techniques or the philosophy, a bit discussion on contaminant transport mechanisms and unsaturated soils. Well, these are the recent trends in geomechanics. Most of you might be selecting your topic for further research, maybe for master's thesis or subsequently your higher studies or maybe as a professional in your career. So, it is interesting to know what is happening in present day you know, as far as geomechanics is concerned. So, my intentions are to give you a very broad idea about what are the things which are happening in our subject, simulation and physical modeling. What do you understand by simulation? Vinil, what is meant by simulation? Let, let him, let him complete, yeah. What is the word simulation correspond to exactly something which is similar to another thing, all right. So, here you are trying to simulate a mechanism or a phenomena and this simulation is either numerical or physical. Now, when we say numerical modeling, we are trying to simulate something in a numerical form and we are trying to look for numerical solutions by keeping boundary conditions and getting a solution mathematically. And the physical modeling basically corresponds to in toto, if you are trying to study how a system is going to respond. So, let us say prototype modeling or centrifuge modeling, where you are making models of different prototypes and then you are trying to see how the model behaves and similarly, this analogy can be extended to study how prototypes are going to behave. Now, this is where artificial neural networks, fuzzy sets and fractals are becoming quite useful in our profession. They are also termed as soft computing tools. I am sure some of you must have taken up some projects related to this in your undergraduate, you know. Anyway, many of us are resorting to these techniques, our colleagues, artificial neural networks, fuzzy sets or fractals and getting a solution to a problem which is of physical nature. Now, coming to the model versus prototype, this is where you can use centrifuge modeling, which is also known as accelerated physical modeling. Uh, you are doing a course also on this I suppose. So, why do you say that it is always accelerated physical modeling, why not chemical modeling? Yeah, partially all of you are correct. See the emphasis is on the word accelerated physical modeling. Now, this corresponds to the limitations of physical modeling. That means, you can only do physical modeling and not chemical and mineralogical modeling. Why? It has something to do with the time. 
okay, the geological time it cannot be simulated under a small duration or in a sample. So basically as you are saying correctly that this is the acceleration of the processes of the mechanism which normally take place in nature and you are interested in seeing how a system corresponds to or responses to. The second big topic on which many of us are working is soil or ground improvement techniques. Though people say that it has become quite saturated but still lot of challenges are there and this require attention of researchers and scholars. You must be aware of geosynthetics, geotextiles, geomembranes, geoforms, preloading and use of additives. Is it not? What type of additives you use for modifying or improving the ground? That's right. So, the simplest possible form of additive would be lime or cement mixed with lime or some pozzolana mixed with lime. So, this is what is coming on since long, it is nothing new. But then why people are not satisfied with this type of uh, ground improvement? Why should they be studying this further? So, this is this is pro use of resins, but my question is why people want to augment additives or this technology further? Why do they want to use resins first of all? Well, that you can achieve easily by putting lime or cement lime solution. Good, that is right. Then the question is how do you define durability? One of the attributes of durability is something which lasts long, that is correct. So, again the question is why people are not happy with conventional additives which have been added to the soil mass. Any guess? Vinil, when you say durability, that means you are trying to say that conventional additives were not durable, that is right, but can you justify it, why they are not durable? True, yes. So, what happens? If lime reacts with water, then what is going to happen? There is a diffusion of calcium, you know, which takes place over a period of time. Any example where diffusion of calcium takes place in human body? Bones. What is the disease known as? Osteoporosis. All right. Osteoporosis. So, what happens? Your bones become quite perforated, they become more porous. The same thing happens if you are injecting lime in soil mass. You cannot control water table, you cannot control flowing water. So, what happens? In the due course of time, all these additives diffuse because what you are doing is you are creating a concentrated source within the soil mass of these chemicals. And we have been discussing this quite a lot that whenever there is a concentrated mass of some chemicals, the diffusive contaminant transport will take over. So, truly speaking, this type of methodology is not lasting long and that is the reason why people are still interested in, you know, creating new additives and another thing is lime, cement and all these are precious materials. So, there is a environmental hazard associated with mining of lime itself, plus it is a natural resource. So, how long we will be digging out mine from the nature and then using it for some purpose? So, that is where actually people are trying to work on new additives which is of the type of resins or PVC granules or polymers and so on. So, this is where geomechanics interfaces with you know applied material science also particularly PVC and so on advanced materials. And good example is 
geosynthetic geotextiles these are nothing but pvcs which are being used by geotextile engineers in a good form another big challenge is selection of fill material why do you think that selection of fill material is becoming such a big issue can you justify this no first of all the natural resources are depleting there is a ban on using the top cover of soil itself for making bricks in most of these states in the country why it's a natural resource and this resource is used for agriculture purpose purpose now if you are digging out the soil of the top cover which is very vegetative very fertile what you are left with so this causes people to think again for selection of different types of fill materials where do you use fill materials in geotechnical engineering for making foundation pads filling purpose embankment retaining walls back fill and so on so this is where you can use coal ash fly ash mine tailing i'm sure you must be aware of water mine tailing no any guess yes kunal sorry what is meant by tailings of mine mine tailings are nothing but tailings of mine so after extraction of the ore whatever is left over is known as mine residues or ore residues a better name is mine tailings so the biggest question is how to dispose of these tailings this is becoming a very big environmental issue so the more and more extraction of metals ore you go for the biggest challenge is that you are creating tailings of mine and then how you are going to deal with them it becomes a very big issue now this is where mine tailings can be used as a backfill material provided they do not interact with water and nothing leaches out from these materials because of environmental interaction so it should be a passive material paper pulp why some environmentalists are against paper industries cutting of trees that is one second issue related to geotechnical engineering what is pulp of the paper you will find lot of papers in the journals on related to paper pulp disposal so paper pulp is nothing but after processing the paper whatever is left out is nothing but a silt sized particle so it's a slurry made up of silt which requires your attention to be disposed of properly now i am sure that you are aware of that when you are making paper you use lot of chemicals think of a slurry which has lot of silts particles or silt sized particles plus chemicals so now the question is the more paper you produce the more sludge we are producing and the question is where to dispose of the sludge so this becomes a very big environmental challenge or question dust furnace slag from any iron industry metal forming industry you will produce this in abundance okay so whatever the residues are in the boiler unit they form the blast furnace slag after the recovery of iron from the ore and then question is how to use this now if you granulate this if you powder in this material this becomes ggbfs ground granulated blast furnace slag all right so it becomes ggbfs and its reactivity is very high so this can be used as a replacement for cement but in the core form in the pellet form you can use this as a good foundation material as a fill material what would be the problem suppose if i use this material as a replacement of soil See, everything has a pros and cons so if you use this material as a fill material what are the problems you speculate what is the special gravity of iron sorry 7 that's right not 6 it should be 7 plus what is this unit 
this will be a gravity of soil 2.6, 2.7. So, you are using a material which is almost 3 times heavier than soil mass. So, what happens ultimately? If you use it as a backfill, what is going to happen? Your active earth pressures, passive earth pressures will be enhanced by 3 times. So, this is one of the reasons why people are skeptical in using this material. Otherwise, this can be a good fill material for the foundation and foundation pad. Another problem sometimes is if you use glass furnace slag directly as a foundation replacement, it may consequently react with water and iron and iron oxides may leach into the water table. So, this may also cause a problem. Fiberglass, sorry, can you give an example of what is fiberglass and how this its production is creating more and more environmental issues? Most of the nations are becoming IT major. So, the more IT expansion related work, the more and more glass fibers cables are required. And what are glass fibers? These are nothing but the industrial waste when you are producing fiberglass. So, whatever is remaining amount requires a very special attention to be disposed of properly because this is a very fine silica material and this silica happens to be highly carcinogenic may cause cancer if you inhale it highly active material. So, this is where people try to <coughs> mix glass fiber with soil and then dispose it is one of the techniques. So, these are the issues which are also gaining lot of attention of people particularly people who are related to environmental geomechanics type of work. And of course, conventional environmental geotechnology where the issues related are what type of waste disposal strategies should be adopted which are going to be beneficial. <coughs> In the previous lecture I was telling you the nowadays the concept is not to dispose the waste off only, but you would like to use this waste after certain time. So, the intention is today's waste may become tomorrow's utility or necessity. So, the disposal should be in such a way that tomorrow if I need this material again for any specific purpose, I should be able to take it off easily. So, solid waste management becomes a very big challenge, particularly when you talk about hazardous and toxic waste like radioactive waste management and so on. You must be hearing in newspaper now India is an atomic major, is it not? What has happened recently? Not nuclear treaty, that was long back, recent, most recent one, 5 days back. <coughs> Yes, please. I think you are from the forces. Yeah, Bindya. You are from Indian forces, no? Navy, Army. Okay, but you should be aware of what are the developments. Atomic submarine. What is the name of the submarine? Aryan. That's right. So the more and more industrial activities are taking place, research-oriented weapons and so on. Radioactivity is becoming a major issue, you know, in our environment and this requires attention of civil engineers and particularly geotechnical engineers. <coughs> How to deal with soil contamination, its containment and remediation, these are the steps which we had discussed in the previous lecture and ultimately environmental impact analysis, what type of impact a system is going to have if these practices are not correct or the disposal of waste is not done properly. What are the consequent effects on the environment, mankind and so on. So, these are the issues which are uh, you know quite major and important in today's profession. Anything else which comes to your mind? Should be added up here. Yes, bio waste should come under solid waste management. So, you can talk about here chemical waste, bio waste, you know and uh, bacteria, bio everything will come in this waste from hospitals, waste from industry, research laboratories, toxic waste, hazardous waste and all those things should come under solid waste management. 